queen would want. I tuck him into bed. She only does what any maid finds chancy. So then I argue the toss. Just show him who's boss. You're the queen. So marry who you fancy. Robert Dudley, my darling. Lord Leicester, my love. Aye, in England, there's a wild fluting love that the sacred darkness nourishes. But in Scotland, in the grey daylight, the dark bloom of hatred flourishes. I, John Knox, do preach the evangel of Jesus Christ crucified by repentance and faith, and justification by faith alone. Moved by me God and in humble obedience to him who is upon us all, I have been commanded to blow the first blast or a trumpet against the monstrous regimental women, an abomination against nature and before God. John Knox, more than three years have I born with you. All oh, your rigorous manners of speaking good, both against myself and my French uncles. And yet, I have sought your favour by all possible means. When it shall please God to deliver you, Fred, at bondage of darkness and error, <coughs> into the one true faith, your majesty shall find the liberty of my tongue as a soothing balm unto you. But what are ye to do with my mariage? What are ye in this commonwealth? A subject born within the same. It is my duty no less to forewarn of what I foresee hurt in it. And in the nobility should consent you marry your only husband, who is not of the one true faith. Then they do as muckle as lies within their power to renounce Christ, betray the freedom of the realm, and in the end, to do small comfort to yourself. God, besides, by the bones of your beloved mother, you must destroy this man. Knox, knock as black as nicht. Knox like all the bitter poisons. Knox like three fearful chaps at the door. The dinner doom. Knox that lead the rebels. Knox that break your mother's heart. And Knox that laugh when she did die. Hark at him. The good Lord says, and I agree with him. Hark, hark, tell him. My Knox. I see in Yi Yin, who is convinced that he be moved by the love of God, but is in truth fired rider by the hatred of mankind. Hark, I tell him. There is Yin upon a madam, who is the best judge, the only. You raise the part of my nation, my subjects, against my mother and against myself, their prince anointed by God. You have written a personalist treatise of a book against my just authority. You have been the cause of great sedition and even greater slaughter in England. By the right worshipping of God, men learn from their hearts to obey their just princes. And you think I have no just authority? Your Majesty, if this cell finds no inconveniency in the regiment of women, then that which they approve, I shall not further disallow. Except within your own heart and breast. My heart is God's. But I shall be as well to live under you as Paul's to live under now. Madam, open your heart to God's truth. And you will bid my subjects obey me? Madam, I will. <laughs> then they shall obey you, not me, their lawful prince. I believe what God plainly speaks in his word. I, and I dare the head that tore your salt ears, then I betray my God or nation by my silence. And yet will I, in my helm and in my heart, silently defend the Kirk of Rome. And I will marry who I please. Ye will grant me good tolerance as I have aid granted you and your reformed Kirk. Your Majesty, I shall never be seduced by the sudden song of toleration. I fear you didn't understand the country you're a queen of. Nevertheless, I will marry who I please. I 
Pray God grant you the wisdom of Deborah among the Israelites. Can you want to duck, Mr. Knox? You'll hide in the race's cold cat. And is there any comfort in his care? Aye, cold comfort. But there are those who say it all the best is the climate. But I will marry who I can love. In the name of the wee man, in the name of the feather, the sun, the power and the glory. I wish to Christ I could tell you a different story. <laughs> <laughs>